if you are in your mid to late 30s entering 40s and you have recently started to see fine lines textures around your eyes around your mouth something that even your makeup isn't able to camouflage exactly the way it used to until a few years ago and if you wonder you know what skincare products do i need to go for you know is it good for my indian brown skin then you might want to follow this channel because on this channel i talk about products ingredients cutting through the beauty noise with honest no filter reviews for indian women over 35 living abroad real skin real results and advice that helps you decide with confidence Hello people, my name is Neha. Welcome back to another video on Ageless Glow Chronicles. Whatever I share on my channel is based on my personal opinion, my personal experience with that particular product. I also research ingredients and formulations referring to clinical studies and credible sources. Hence, I'm not solely relying on brand claims. I look into the science and tell you why it can work. My goal is to give you an honest review that blends real life usage results with research backed information. And this way you get a balanced perspective before deciding if a product might work for you. Now you have probably heard a lot about retinol but another recent name that has been popping up a lot on my social media feed and I believe on yours too is retinol. So are they the same? Is one better than the other? Let's break it down. Now before I talk about retinol or retinol let me take a minute to talk about retinoic acid which is naturally produced in our bodies and it keeps our skin firm elastic it helps boost collagen elastin production it just keeps our body our skin young and if i talk about specifically retinoic acid for skin it helps boost skin cell turnover helps boost firmness and helps reduce wrinkles and fine lines. And as we age, along with other things that are starting to reduce in our bodies, retinoic acid also reduces. So topically applying it on our skin definitely helps boost and replenish those effects. Now you can't really go and ask for retinoic acid products over the counter because they are not generally available. They are prescription based because they are really powerful and they might not sit on your skin, you know, your, your skin might not need it at that point. A lower concentration might work better for you and that's why you have retinol and retinal in the market. They are lower concentration, lower percentage, that helps you achieve those benefits without causing too much irritation on your skin. And yes, these are available over the counters. You can just go buy, you can buy it on Amazon, you can buy it from a pharmacy shop. So how does a retinol or a retinal works? Basically, our skin needs retinoic acid, right? So when we apply retinal or retinol onto our skin, it converts into retinoic acid the form that our skin actually needs to keep itself firm and youthful. Retinol takes two steps to convert into retinoic acid and retinal takes one step to convert into retinoic acid. Simply putting, if you want to think of an example is, um, think of a road trip. You know, your destination is retinoic acid. If you use retinol to get there, you will take longer. If you use retinal to get there, it's a shorter trip to the destination. Let's talk about efficacy and strength because that's something that's really confusing and the information, like so much of it is available out there, it's kind of confounding. What I found is retinal converts faster than retinol because it's just one step away from retinoic acid, the form that our skin needs. And as compared to retinol, which takes two steps to convert into retinoic acid, the conversion is slower. The results can still be excellent, but could take longer. The thing with retinol is that it's widely available. A lot of brands have different percentage and kind of formulations available. There is a lot of clinical data, a lot of research studies that have been done on retinol. Often the first vitamin A people try. Now at this point, I want to talk about studies that I wanted to, you know, directly compare retinol versus retinal. I did not find any, you know, head to head comparison of retinol versus retinal. But what I found, I think it could help us give some idea of, um, you know how effective each of them is so one of the studies i found is retinol versus retinoic acid a controlled study compared the effects of topical retinol and retinoic acid on skin structure and function after just four weeks both increased epidermal thickness boosted collagen and improved wrinkle appearance after 12 weeks of retinol use both showed similar anti-aging changes 
though retinoic acid may act faster. Another study that I found compared retinaldehyde, retinal, to retinoic acid. And it says a randomized clinical study compared 0.05% retinaldehyde with 0.05% retinoic acid for treating photo-aged skin. Both reduced roughness and wrinkles effectively. However, retinoic acid caused significantly more irritation, negatively affecting compliance. Now on that note, let's dive a little bit deeper on the irritation potential coming from both these ingredients. As you might know it already, or you know, from what I have said earlier in the video, retinoic acid is highly potent, but is highly irritating as well. And that's why it's prescription only in many places. Now retinal considered to be generally well tolerated, even giving its high potency. And if you use a formula that uses encapsulation technology that further reduces, you know, even that mild irritability that comes with using a retinal and also improves the formula's stability. Retinol, on the other hand, more commonly causes dryness, flakiness, irritation, even peeling in higher concentrations. And all these uneasy feelings that come with using retinol all depends on its formulation and the percentage. If you're new to retinol, you have never used it and you are just, you know, thinking of using it, here is one video that I did some time ago which talks about you know retinol for the beginners. There is a load of information that's there. Please go check it out and you know it will I believe it will definitely help you decide what kind of formulation you should try considering you are a beginner. Now maybe you're wondering they both help with anti-aging. Both convert into retinoic acid in the skin. Okay, one converts faster, one converts slower. Why do they both exist even? Like what is the need for both of them to exist at the same time? Why can't it just be retinol? Why are we talking about retinal these days? This question also comes to my mind um, and here is a simple explanation that I think makes a whole lot of sense why these two exist in the market. Retinol is cheaper to formulate, it is more stable, has more research behind it. It is a better entry point for vitamin A beginners. On the other hand, retinal, it is harder to stabilize, it is more expensive, it is newer in the consumer market, so there is not much of research behind it. It often appeals to people who want faster results without jumping to prescription tretinoin. I believe this comparison might have given you some insights about what kind of vitamin A derivative you should be going for based on you know your current stage of life. If you are a beginner, you've never used vitamin A, go for retinol with the smallest concentration. And if you have been using retinol for a few years and you think you can move to a higher more potent formula, go for retinal. Now, whatever you choose to use, retinol or retinal, you definitely need to go for a sunscreen. Use it the day immediately after, use it throughout the week, because both of these ingredients, they make your skin sensitive to sunlight, UVA, UVB rays, and you definitely need to protect your skin against any kind of sun damage. From my personal experience, I've been using retinol for a few years. I've tried many different brands, I've tried uh, so many different kinds of um, you know formulations with combined with retinol with bacchiol retinol you know just retinol alone and different formulations different percentages as well from uh, one percent to even ten percent I have been using them for quite a few years I have been using them for some time and recently I came across this new product by wish trend which is a retinal and I was like I think it's my time to try it because I've already been using retinol. My skin is kind of adapted to it. So in my experience of using both retinol and retinal, here is what I have to say. All the retinol formulations that I've used, even the small percentage or a higher percentage, when I applied them, it gives a sensation to the skin. Some of them were like really intense. Some of them were not so intense, but there is definitely a sensation of, you know, using um, a, retina, a retinol. And this was maybe like three, four years ago. But now I've seen retinol formulations combined with bacchiol or ceramides and they do not have that kind of, you know, they, they are quite subtle and they still give you those benefits of anti-aging. While the first time I used retinol was like just a regular moisturizer. Usually when I do retinol, I use sandwich method because I have sensitive skin combination to oily. And I use, uh, you know, sandwich method where I use a moisturizer, apply my retinol and then seal it with another layer of moisturizer. And that helps me minimize any irritation, you know, any breakouts. But when I used this one by Wish Trend, oh my God, this did not cause me anything. In fact, the first time I tried it, I did put another moisturizer on top, but I realized it was too thick for my skin. And now whenever I use it, I don't layer it up with any sort of moisturizer. It is highly moisturizing and 
kind of very soothing on its own. In terms of texture and you know the application, I don't think I felt any sort of differences, yes. But one thing I would say in terms of packages, I think because retinol is more stable than retinal, uh, it, you can find it in uh, packages which are like serum based. So you open the cap, you know, it, is ex it gets exposed in the air and then you use the serum, apply it, whatnot. But anything that comes with retinal, it is always, I've seen, it is always comes in a pump package where it's sealed, it's packed. Only the product that comes out comes in contact with the air and not the rest of the, you know, the entire formulation itself. One thing I would also like to add here, with all the research and the brand claims, you might feel, you know, it's going to work like magic. You apply it once and boom, the next morning, you are like back into your 20s. No, it's not going to work like that. Even with one application, you know, two weeks, three weeks, no, you have to be consistent. Consider using it for at least 12 weeks before, so, before seeing any noticeable results. Now, just putting it all together as a final piece of advice, they both work. Retinol is slow and a steady option. Sometimes it can cause some irritation. Retinol, on the other hand, is fast, is uh, pricier and not so much irritating. So choose one based on your skin's tolerance, needs and your own budget. And remember one very, very important thing, consistency is the key. There are no overnight miracle happening. And that is all for today's video. I'll see you all in my next video. Until then, stay tuned, stay beautiful.